<laughs> Weird music. <laughs> what about it, dude? Keep playing it. Fucking classy. Does that say Lady Fingers? Yeah, dude, it's Herb Alpert. Oh. Well, we are back with another Washington vlog, and what better way to start it out with Put another- Put your seatbelt on. Yeah, another quick run on the toge. Um, today, we were planning on actually going go-karting, so I'm gonna try to film <laughs> that, film us being stupid and hitting each other there. Uh, but, oh yeah, and another like cool thing that's actually gonna happen, I'm gonna go to the track on Sunday, or in a couple days, um, with some friends that I know up here. Uh, this is like the original track day I was supposed to go to, but maybe I can convince them to let me drive their cars, but I don't, I'm, I'm not going to count on that, but it should be fun. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and hit these back roads really quick and get some footage of it. That looked really cool. The trick to looking fast is you set your, uh, your speedometer to kilometers per hour. <laughs> So people think you're going like 60, even though you're going half that. Whoa! So, we scrapped the whole go-kart thing. Um, they didn't let me zip tie my phone onto my helmet. They didn't like that very much. Uh, so, I didn't think it would be worth getting footage. It wouldn't look cool. It wouldn't look like we were having fun. I don't even know who would film us because it was just two of us. So, yeah. But, it's okay because we're going to see my friend's 2J FRS and we're going to do a little comparison um, of mine and his. How like we did, how he did things and how I did things. He has a little more, like I said, a little more money into it. So we can kind of do like, or you can kind of like look at my car, like more of a budget LS swap versus like high end, like get all the nice parts, 2J swap. Um, but yeah, we're about to be at his house right now. So we'll see it in like a couple minutes. All right, so I just got to Leon's house. This is him right here and this is his car. Um, now we're gonna pretty much do like a walk around. gonna ask him a couple questions and see what he's got running on this thing. Welcome, this is my, uh... 2015 Scion FRS, it's a 2JZ VVTi swapped. Uh, uh, it's my Pro-Am car, and this is the first year that I'm really testing it out and learning how to drive it, so let's check it out. Yeah, let's see that engine. About like two or three months now since it's been swapped, about four events. There's actually an event tomorrow, and uh, gotta test everything out. It's a Borg Warner EFR 8374. Um, they're helping me out this season, and it's tuned with the Link Fury ECU by uh, Jason Ulfrain. He actually was the owner of uh, PSI in Portland, but now he's the vice president of Link North America. So, what better person to tune yeah, your car? That's a nice little hookup, yeah. Yeah, what better person to tune your car? So, he knows what he's doing. This thing's running really good right now. Um, I was having, like, cooling issues. I still kind of am at this point, like, uh, until I do rear mount radiator, but we're kind of making it work just doing, like, a couple laps at a time, and we're going to find out tomorrow. I just put a little bit of thicker oil in it. Actually, we're running a 20 weight 50 BR1 full synthetic. Um, Shoot, I was going to start running on mine. Yeah, it's actually not bad. It's, uh, I don't know, like, 11 bucks a quart. It's, like, I feel like touch. it's cheaper because no one buys it that often, well, you so can they buy, have to sell so it. So, for your LS, I think you can buy, like... The non-synthetic probably I, I bought the full synthetic one and like, uh, <laughs> it's either way like it's only like 11 bucks a quart i was running yeah. uh, joe gibbs racing before and that was great too but um it was actually i think it was just thinning out too much it was 10 weight 40 so that's why this event we're switching to 20 weight 50 see if we can maybe get an extra run out of it it's been uh two runs I have to pull off to cool down um so we're maybe try to get three runs out of it this time before we pull down and it's not like it's getting super super hot it's like probably getting about like 200 at the most like 195 and i've just had yeah, bad that's... luck with motors so i've just i'm, I'm taking it uh I'm playing it really safe so, uh actually what what motor is this for you now this is motor number three wait it's number three number three i thought it was number two no so well the first motor i think was just bad luck i bought it um off of someone it's supposed to be a built motor and uh well 
I just had an oil pump issue and that kind of led to total, you know, motor failure. Um, I reused that turbo that I bought from the same person and I don't need to name names or anything, but you know, let's just say I was warned before I bought this stuff and uh, either way, I used the same turbo again on my second motor. I bought an Aristo motor from JDM of San Diego and that motor is actually great. I think what happened was uh, when the I blew the turbo up, and when the turbo blew up, I replaced the turbo with the same exact one, and that made it one event. And then the second event, I think I don't think I cleaned out the um, oiling system enough. Like I, oh, I you think the pieces the, got into the oil yeah? I never lines took and... off the pan. I you know I replaced the oil cooler, the lines, and flushed everything out. But I never you know replaced the pickup or cleaned the pickup out. Yeah, like, the turbo blew up, so. Yeah, that probably led to engine number two, and at that, uh, oh, dude, I didn't even know. I I wasn't. Oh yeah, no, I didn't this see is that. Number three, and at this point, this is like, it's basically a fully built, um, or sorry, semi-built block, uh, manly rods and pistons, and you know, it was like line bearings and, and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, line bore and hung, King's race bearings. Um, it has uh, AP, ARP uh, head studs and main studs. How much? How much boost are you pushing? Uh, nineteen pounds right now. Okay, it so makes, yeah, you're definitely gonna. Yeah, it makes four hundred. That's on pump gas, so I haven't tuned it on E85. Yet. <laughs> you're gonna make like an extra hundred yeah, on E85. Um, you're probably like close. That. A little bit more. A little bit more. Really? Um, well, I mean, it depends. Like, I mean, this turbo is good for like seven fifty, probably. I mean, like I said, it really depends. But with E85, it changes everything up. I think I'm yeah. gonna do it next season with uh, the fuel cell. Right now, I'm still running stock tank, and it messes with your O-rings. That happened to me. That, as soon as I took everything apart, well, they so all expanded. That and it's just the fuel system right now is like so bad. Like anybody who's looking to do a swap like this, um, they really have to not cheap out on their fuel system. Like I'm barely making a buy with my the stock tank and our cars. It's a saddlebag system, and there's basically a pickup right here, and then there's a pickup right here. And sometimes, when especially when you're drifting, the slosh, up, the slosh, it really gets you because all the fuel goes to one side, and then you know you feel cut or what pump? What out. pump are you running? Because I'm running the Dishworks 300, and I well, I haven't drifted with it yet, so I don't. So have I fuel originally was running an AM 362. I actually have it for sale, um, and I got it tuned originally at PSI, and. It was limited to fuel volume. Basically, uh, I was losing fuel pressure after like 13, 14 pounds of boost. Okay. And um, the pump was doing its job just fine, the 362 liter per hour one. But uh, I think the pickup was insufficient enough. <sighs> Not sure how secure that is, but. Do you know mine's the same thing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> scrape all that stuff off. Yeah, you might be able to see it, but it's it's basically allows you to run like a dash eight um, fuel pump out, and allows you. It's a dual pump carrier, so it actually has like a baffle plate underneath. It's Does a, it have like a surge tank, or is it just two? No, pumps? so it's like a baffle plate, but then it carries two Walbro 450 pumps, and oh, that's okay. more than enough. I actually only have one hooked up, or both are plumbed. One's hooked up uh, and running. The other is like a backup pump. Yeah, and uh, it works great, but you still need a surge tank. And the reason I haven't got one yet is because I'm doing a fuel cell, you know, in off season. So it's all built into it. Yeah, I just kind of, I'm just gonna wait it out. But for right now, I'm getting by. I have to top it off every like lap or two. It, it's a gas guzzler. For really? Sure. Dude, Odie's car goes through gas like, yeah, like no other. It's literally like you can let it idle and you can watch the the fuel level just like lower in the <laughs> in the tank. My fuel gauge doesn't work very great. Like that's the thing with my wiring. Like it's all I'm done up? by myself and my friends. Yeah. And um. Well, I'm minus the engine harness. Wiring Specialties helped me out this year as well for Pro-Am. Um, helped me out with the harness and some sensors and miscellaneous stuff. But the entire chassis wiring is done by like myself and my friend Rafi. Well, that's what I'm and, gonna do too. You know, OBP pedal box, Pegasus Auto Racing helped me out uh, a lot this season with like miscellaneous parts like that, like the pedal box and fittings and lines and all, all sorts. But uh, yeah, it's a, Floor mounted pedal box with uh it's probably way easier to set up too. Um I actually prefer like a 
top mounted pedal box but the reason I yeah did that's is, what I, I was gonna the think reason I didn't is because I actually pounded out my tunnel so much you can kind of see right there for the CD09 it's yeah. such a large transmission I had to pound it out and then got in the way of my yeah, throttle I, pedal I know about that. <laughs> yeah so it's pretty simple interior 425 motorsports to the cage helped me out with all the safety gear last year it's all pretty much the same um, one thing that's different is the uh, race pack IQ3 dash Borg Warner EFR 19 pounds of boost and made 435 horsepower and uh, like 390 torque and yeah it was great. I see a lot of familiar stuff though with like uh, the way you did your um oh with your uh, like yeah, yeah with like wiring yeah. specifically the way I ran things. You see stuff, I still kept the stock battery yeah, location exactly it's kind of did. like I, it'll eventually be moved to the back when I do fuel cell but yeah we're about to load this up on the trailer and yeah I can turn her on really quick and we'll and take it for a quick spin let's take around it for the block. A quick spin around like the block really quick, but uh, yeah, I guess I'll start her up for for you guys. So I have manual brakes now too. Okay, so. in the car now hope you guys enjoyed seeing that um it, it's kind of a cool comparison honestly he does a he has a little bit more money put into it than i do uh, i have more of like i guess like a grassroots build or i guess cheaper build if you want to pretend like it's not cheap but um yeah uh we're gonna go to the track tomorrow uh the, the deal was is I, if i can fit in a seat and use his pedal box properly i can drive his car i honestly don't think that i can i'm like six foot four and I don't know how tall he is, but I looked at it and I was like, this is gonna be close, but I guess we'll see. I have other friends too. Maybe I can scam them into letting me drive a couple couple laps, see what happens. But yeah, stay tuned for tomorrow. There will be drifting and it will be fun. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on the video if you like two JZs, cause I'm a big fan of JDM stuff. The reason I have an LS is because it's cheap. So don't think I'm an LS purist. All right, I'll see you guys later.